everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Katie. It's officially Catherine on there. So I'll be talking today about home modifications and ways to prevent falls in our home environment as we age and specifically looking at the older adult population. That's mostly what we work with here. And um, but knowing that OTs also can work with kids and other populations as well and in different environments as schools or work or any other part of your life that you're engaged in. But this presentation specifically is going to be about your home and ways to reduce falls and ways to look at things that may cause a fall. So here we are going. And please ask questions at the end. We'll, I'll save time for that. And there's going to be an interactive part too. So you guys get to jump in towards the end. So again, we're going to define what occupational therapy is first and what a fall is and some risk factors associated with them. We're also going to give you an opportunity to identify home hazards and be able to pay attention to your home environment. Um, also to let you know what we do in a nutshell is we can provide adaptive equipment, we can provide home recommendations to make the home safer and that could be through the architect of it or through equipment that you could add. Um, also we're gonna, I'm gonna kind of give you a little bit of a background to what are we looking for in the person that, themselves to identify what would be a fall risk for them. So looking at the person as a whole, their, their values, their beliefs, their, what, how much functional performance they're doing with their activities of daily living, which are ADLs, and that can include many of things that we do throughout our day. So as OTs, like I said, we may assist people of all ages to participate and maintain function in ADLs. And that could be eating, grooming, dressing, bathing, toileting, and instrumental activities. Those are the IADLs, such as cooking, cleaning, money management, or community integration. Um, we also help people function in all environments. Again, that could be home, work, or school. And we look at their physical, their psychological, their cognitive aspects of their well-being as well. And there's just some fun pictures. The services we're going to provide are um, some interventions that may include helping um, the people or their caregivers as well engage in those activities, their physical or cognitive changes that they see as they age, and really trying to regain functional performance and maintain their safety within their environment. And towards the end, we'll talk about aging in place and what does that really mean too. A lot of what we um, do as OTs as well is educate and provide recommendations for creating a safe um, home for yourself or for your loved one. Um, and using adaptive equipment, making sure that you know how to use it or what it is. I don't have it here right now, but I provided some pictures at the end so you'll know a little bit more about what that is. Um, other goals that we're going to look at too, I'm going to go back for a minute, is in a nutshell too, we want to create a good home space for you. We want to promote function and we want to establish and maintain your independence or your safety or anything else that is a goal for you in your life. So then we're going to get into falls. What is considered a fall? Most of us have probably had a fall in our lifetime and we don't plan for that. So if someone does, then maybe, but usually we don't. So it's an unintentional event where we land on the floor or the ground. And falls are not considered a normal part of aging. As we become older though, the chances of getting an injury from falls may increase. So we, I put some statistics in these presentations as well. Um, one out of three people over the age of 65 fall at least once each year. And those falls may cause physical injury. They may cause you to fear falling. You also may restrict your activities then if there is an injury present. And most falls then involve a couple risk factors that go along with them. So we may be able to identify those risk factors before we have a fall to maintain our safety. Is the statistic this since you said it's not part of normal aging. Correct. Fall, is that statistic one in three 
regular, like all age people? It, yeah, I mean, most of the time we have a fall. We just don't pay attention to it? It could be. Um, we just pay attention to more of the older population on this slide here. I have, again, over the age of 65, we have one in three falls each year, and then it increases as we age. So age, though, is not the reason why we fall. It's the risk factors, or it's the, the weakness, or the balance problems, or our vision changes. That's a big part of it. Um, but age specifically doesn't mean you're going to fall. It's just a higher risk factor. That's really, yeah. yeah. And these are some, um, and some more statistics from the World Health Organization that falls are the second leading cause of accident, accidental or unintentional injury of deaths worldwide. And estimated 424,000 individuals die from falls globally, which over 80% are in a low or middle income countries. And um, fatal falls can occur as well. It's not something fun to talk about, but it, it is out there. So we have to recognize that and be careful and be cognizant of that. So really our focus, again, is to prevent and to educate and to train caregivers, loved ones, also the person themselves to create a safe environment and to keep us in our field of OT, keep research up to date. And this is going to be a driving force in OT coming the next 10 years or so because of the baby boomers and our aging population. It's, it's going to double or triple even. So it's a major area we need to look at. So I'm going to look at, give you diff, 10 different ways that we can reduce our risk of falls and what different components that includes. Um, assess the risk factors first. Maintaining your balance is very important. And assessing your feet, your footwear, the clothing you're wearing. Is that a tripping hazard for you? Is it unstable? Or do our shoes come untied often? Things like that. And also changes in our body structures as well. And then staying active, of course. Exercise we know is not just good for the body, but good for our brain. And managing our health overall. Knowing your medications. Be educated on the consequences of falling. And knowing what to do if you fall. Again, being safe in the community and creating a safe home environment. So some of these risk factors here, I have a checklist, so I know it might be a little small on the slides, but if you go through and if you're checking more than two or two of those, then your chances of falling are increased. And we may have a, a more than a two of those on there, but knowing that these are some different causes that the risk factors that increase your risk of having a fall throughout your lifetime. So maintaining our balance. Balance is our ability to maintain the equilibrium against the force of gravity. And there's three major components to balance. There's a lot that goes in, but the three major components we're gonna look at is our vision. So making sure that you do have your vision checked annually by the doctor, that you're, if you even have glaucoma or macular degeneration or anything that's changing, that maybe you get it checked more than just once a year. Protecting your vision um, also could be wearing glasses, but knowing if you wear bifocals or anything that gives you that extra change um, of visual perception, it can change our way of looking at different thresholds. Or when we see a stare, we may see it come to a little bit farther away or closer than it truly is. So taking the glasses off when doing stairs may be helpful. Um, and using good lighting. Lighting is huge for vision. And we know also that if it's a well-lit area, it can also cause a glare. So making sure that you don't just look at the lighting and make sure it's bright, but looking at the shadows. A lot of the times, just looking in here, these lights, the overhead lights, can cause glares on the chairs here. And for someone who has a visual change, that may be a tripping hazard. They can't truly tell if that's the ground or if it's raised or um, declined in the surface. So paying attention to those things. Another part is the inner ear. Our inner, we have inner ear crystals that help regulate where our head is in our body in control of our motion. So if we're looking right or left while walking, we may have trouble balancing or it throws off or we need an extra minute to 
to get our bearings back. Um, just paying attention to those. So making sure you get your hearing checked. And again, every year or more if we need to. And then proprioception. Big word, but in a nutshell it means the sensors in your skin, your joints and muscles that tell where your body, are, where your body is in parts. So a good example I tell people is when we are in the middle of the night and we wake up and we have to use the restroom, can you tell where your body's moving, where you're rolling? It's dark. Can you tell though where your body's going to be moving in place so that you get out of bed safely? So that you don't step and miss the, the, the threshold or that you know where the light switch is without turning a light on already. But you know where your body's moving in space. Some guidelines to staying active are first you want to make sure you check with your doctor or any um, when you're engaging in any other new physical activity but according to the CDC you want to do physical activity could be just anything that gets you moving but there are two main components that we want you to focus on are the aerobics and the muscle strengthening so making sure you get some cardio and strengthening in and that's recommended for 150 minutes a week and also um, engaging those the muscle strengthening activities could be twice a week so you're, you want to stay active first and foremost S larger group of muscles you can work on at a time may be helpful like legs and hips and backs and arms you can do together I'll go through and give you some examples again using like resistive bands or free weights or push-ups if you don't want to use weights you can do push-ups modified on the ground or on the table. It doesn't have to be a true army push-up. Um, and then there, I included both for aging and for older adults and for the 18 to 64. But you see it's pretty similar in that it's 150 minutes for each. So we shouldn't be slowing down as we age. We should try to maintain, maintain physical activity but our activities may change. So just paying attention to, you know, maybe we were jogging and running as we were younger, and now we're just gonna do a brisk walk. Or we do water aerobics. Anything in the pool is gonna be less impact on your joints as well. And so different ways to stay engaged though, and it's very important. And then balancing and stretching exercises. Those should be done every day, if we can. Focused on the, the elongation of your muscles and making sure that we're staying active and that we're challenging our balance every day. Even, even just standing on one foot at, you know, while brushing your teeth or something, making sure that you have good balance first. But if you want to give yourself a little bit more of a challenge. Assessing feet, footwear, and clothing. As we age, we have body structures that can change, um, such as our feet, and that can cause joint deformities, that can have bunions, they can have ingrown toenails, anything that puts you at risk, though, for falling. We know that if you don't have good support on your feet or if there's a toe that's really hurting you, you're going to try and avoid that, and it may throw your balance off a little bit. Just things to pay attention to. So, we want to wear good shoes that are well supportive but not too tight so that it, they're not causing any blood flow restrictions. And looking at also avoiding slippers or bare feet or um, stockings on any hardwood floor or any slippery surfaces because that can be a fall risk too. And clothing suggestions. These are not, not so the clothing's not too large, not too flowy. When you're walking by, making sure you're not going to get caught on the door or snagged on anything. Another one is managing our health. So what's important about managing our health? There's a lot. And we know that we should have regular check checkups annually as we go to understand our conditions, but making sure that you're prepared. So if you have an appointment and you have questions, you only have so much time to get those, uh, those needs met. So bring a piece of paper, write your questions down, have a format and take notes so that you're a little bit more informed and that you can look back and say, now what did we talk about? Or what was that change in medication? And why am I taking it? 
just be aware that you want to be prepared. Another big part of our exercise and well-being is making sure that we get enough sleep, that we have good energy, that our brain is going to be functioning as best as we can with our ability. A big part too is exercising can be challenging for some people at times, so we want to try to establish a routine. If it's even to start 10 minutes a day walking, that would be better than nothing, right? And so eventually working your way up to 30 minutes a day, but trying to do something that's engaging and more um, fun for you too, to help you stay on top of that routine. Maintaining good exercise too is gonna make sure that you have good bone density and that you're not going to risk a fracture if say you do have a fall. But other ways you can do that is by adequate vitamin D and calcium supplements or food intake, or doing weight-bearing and strengthening exercises as well. Staying active physically and mentally. Major part of our, our aging process, even if after we retire, our huge part of our life is work. Now, if we lose work and we are ready to retire and you have vacation, you have plans and things like that, knowing that on vacation, on any other day, you want to stay mentally and physically engaged. That doesn't mean just to go and sit in front of the TV for hours. That is not meant for us to, to do that. It's a distraction, truly, in our daily environments. Then eating a well-balanced diet, depending on your conditions, too, if you have any other health conditions. Drinking enough water. And then paying attention to your, your daily physical activity. So if you've been sitting or lying more than 20 minutes at a time, do something physical. You know, it could just be ankle pumps, moving your feet up and down, marching those legs up and down, anything. Standing up, doing some sit to stands, but knowing that you wanna get your blood pumping and take time to focus on that. Knowing your medications, huge part of balance, huge part of a fall risk. Medications have a lot of different side effects and everyone is different in how they, um, their side effects to the medita medication. As we age too, the absorption of our, our bodies can change as well. So how well can we tolerate that dosage? And knowing that, talk to your doctor first and fo foremost, that's what they're there for. If you notice any new changes or any other changes that have occurred since change, a different medication prescription or anything new that it can cause dizziness or nausea or something that's gonna affect your well-being overall. And then reviewing them at least every six months so that you're staying on top of this and you have an ongoing list. You know the side effects associated with meds. You have them readily available. So maybe keeping one by your medication cabinet or area at your house and then keeping one on you at all times just in case. And another part is trying to use one pharmacy as well. That can be a, a big part where people switch and get confused on medications and you don't want to have to go to the hospital because of medication error or overdose. Some more facts and consequences of falling. We know that 10% of falls can result in physical um, injury in the community dwelling older adult, older adult. And so that can cause fractures, that can cause head injuries, that can be any laceration, any bruise, anything. Um, it just brings you down. So after that too, we know that, that 27,000 older adults died as a result of falls in 2014. That's 74 older adults every day. That's a huge statistic. And so that's why preventing falls in the home is, is gonna be huge as our population ages, as it doubles or triples in the size. That number is also gonna go up. And so it, it's scary to think, but we do, that's more important. We have to think and be proactive. Um, and also the fear of falling. That can be a major side effect or a risk factor to falling again. That when we're skidding up, we, we remember that traumatic event or that experience or that hip still hurts from last week and it reminds you. 
You're, you're reminded by this in different subtle ways as well. And then if we do have any injuries or anything that causes us a setback, we know that it's gonna cut down our physical activity. So everything that we just discussed, your exercise, your ability to maintain your balance, all of that's gonna be diminished. So we need to maintain a, a routine and try to focus on that as much as you can to end result of not falling again, trying to prevent that from happening. Quickly, I'm just gonna look over what do you do if you fall. Um, a lot of people, when they do have a fall, first thing is first, just stop. Rest and wait. You're already down. You're not gonna get hurt any other way. There's no need, there's no rush to get up. Sometimes we get anxious and we worry and, well, oh gosh, we gotta get up, or you're in public and it's embarrassing. But first and foremost, just rest and wait. Breathe. Look at the environment, you know, look at what, what's going on around you. Are, is there help there? Do you need, are you injured? You know, assess your body from head to toe. If not, then yes, if you feel strong enough to, to try to get up, there's a technique to roll onto your hands and crawl towards a sturdy surface, or if you have the ability to use your knee and push up off of that as well. Um, I just wanted to provide a, a little quick reminder too, that if you do have falls or have a loved one that has had a fall, that there are emergency response systems, personal emergency response systems, which ones like a life alert or a button that you press or that's signaled as if you can't get up, it would send a phone call out to the company and they would send out emergency response for you. So if you're not near a telephone, but we'll talk a little bit more about home environment and what to do to try to set up your home so if you do have a fall that it's, it's safe for you. And in the community, being safe in our community. Trying to take your time and be aware of the environment. When we're walking, we wanna try and look about six steps ahead of us if we can. And being able to look out for any environmental hazards or is there a crack in the sidewalk up there that I have to pay attention to? Or if the ground is on a slant, do, can we see that truly? Um, watching out for obstacles, being extra careful. We don't have too much bad weather here, but it's been windy this week. And so that wind can really throw you and throw your balance off too, especially if we don't have that proprioception where we can't feel where our body's moving in space. That can make, take a huge toll on your balance and knock you over. Um, stairs, major part of falling, making sure that you hold on to the handrail, you're aware of the height and the perception. Again, if you're wearing those bifocals, to take the glasses off to try those. Other areas in the community that you want to think about is if you take public transportation or if you're walking through the parking lot. People aren't always looking for you, so you have to be looking for them. And making sure that you can avoid the cars coming or avoid the curb that's there and maintain your balance. Now getting to our home environment in the older adults. According to AARP, a housing survey, the 83% of the older adult Americans want to stay in their current homes for the rest of their lives. Now the other studies show that most homes though are not a are not made to fit those needs of our aging adult population. And what does that mean then? You know, we want to stay in our home. Home is a place of comfort and fulfillment and safety. We shouldn't feel like we're going to have an accident or an injury from just staying in our home environment. So more than 75% of falls can occur at home. If we're looking at where we are throughout our day as well, we're majority of time is going to be at home as we're an older adult and getting out in the community may diminish a little bit more but home is always where um, there's hazards and things we want to be careful for. Uh, before any home modifications are completed you want to evaluate your current environment and so today we're going to look at a functional performance or I'll talk about what does that mean in functional performance measures and going through your home, room by room, and assessing some different qualities. 
And I have some pictures that I'll have you guys chime in on as well. The biggest statistic there, as I talked about a little bit before, is 2000, there were approximately 35 million Americans over the age of 65. That was 16 years ago. You know, there's, that's probably already tripled, doubled. Now, and, but by 2030, they estimated that there would be 71.5 million Americans over the age of 65. That's huge. And so this is going to be a major part of our practice, of our research, and our skills to, as OTs to try and make homes and make our safety as, um, a priority for everyone, for caregivers and for us. Now, aging in place. This is a big part of what I'm going to talk about today. And the OT model of practice and our theory, our foundation, makes it essential for us to look at aging in place and the services and the modifications that we need to maintain our safety. Um, it makes, makes us so we can stay in our home environment and stay in that place of comfort. The goal of a, an older an adult wanting to age in place should be to maintain and improve their quality of life. So in anything, promoting that safety and promoting function and promoting that we don't fall or we don't take the risks of falling. Another vital component um, in order for an older adult to remain safe in one's home is to establish a plan focused on the quality of life and the protection of yourself in your home, your finances, your care, and other essential areas. So even if we haven't had falls or if we're not at the 65 and older stage, we should still be looking at our environment and having a plan. Um, making sure that the plan, so you, when you do get there, that you're not just in shock like, oh no, what am I going to do? You have to be able to, to plan ahead. And the self-safety self assessment also should be an ongoing part of your life. So say you twisted your ankle or you had a sprain, well, you're in a three-story townhome. That's going to take a major part into your daily activities. Kitchen's located on the third floor. How are you going to eat? Right? We have to make sure that we're looking at our environment and we're paying attention to that. And we're making changes as we need to. There's a saying that I was reading in an article that in OT, um, her name's Caroline Sithong. She was in um, one of the articles in the Home Modifications just recently, and she developed this phrase causing, cre um, phrase created saying, create space in age in place. And the space acronym is really meaning safe. Um, can we consider the, the safety of the person, the environment, and the occupational performance observed? Um, personalized, which means we include everyone in the process of the home modifications. We want to make sure that it enhances the person in the environment and their daily function. Not that we're just looking at the home and saying, oh, this is, this is it. This is what you have to live with. You change. No, we should be changing our way so that we can make it best for them. Accessibility, we want to strive for access and Support um, is it's supported by the built and the non-built environments that we create within our recommendations. So in, I know in Las Vegas, there's a company, it's called Rage here, and I'm not too familiar with the um, process of that, but Rage stands for Rebuilding All Goals Efficiently. And they've been a huge part of the uh, home accessibilities and home modifications for people who have disabilities. And if you ever, you know, I have the, the name again, that's RAGE, Rebuilding All Goals Efficiently. And they've, they've worked with, um, just recently, the college, the Turo University was partnering with them and they were able to do some home adaptations and modifications with students to go in and do evaluations with homes, knowing that this part of our OT theory and process is going to be changing. It's, it's going to be emerging soon and making sure that students are more focused on the, the modifications. And we need more OTs in home modifications as well, not just the clinical aspect. 
and then cost effective. So the means to make it a financial, um, make financial sense for people. It doesn't have to be this very big burden on your financial um, situation. It can be little things too, the cost effectiveness. We gotta get creative and that's part of our, our profession is not just making it so you have to buy everything, but looking at the home environment. What can we change? Can we, we brainstorm and assess your function as well with that? So I'm gonna also give you a checklist as we go through um, these different scenarios. Afterwards, I'll give you a checklist of what you wanna look for in a home or in the, the room specifically that we're looking at and we'll identify some hazards that are there and what you could do about the hazards. And also making that you go through your own environment at home too, when you get there. So general safety recommendations are going to be looking at your home as a whole. And so that could be electrical cords or looking at the fire, um, the, the batteries in your fire detector, are they, are they up to date? Are they new? Are, do they need to be changed? Also looking at um, where your phones are located within your home. If we have a fall, we wanna make sure that a phone is accessible or if we don't have a personal emergency response system. Where are your medications stored? Also, you know, are they labeled? Are they accessible? Uh, making sure you don't have any throw rugs. And if you do, then making sure you have the, the security on them. So there's a double, double tape you can put on to make sure that they stick to the ground and they're not coming up as you walk so you're not tripping on them. <coughs> but to remove them would be best if they're not necessary. Also looking at appliances, making sure they're, the cords are out of the way or they're not a tripping hazard for you that outlets are needed in every room or where you need them, you can reach them without losing your balance. And extension cords, we, we have a lot of extension cords nowadays, a lot of technology, and making sure that there's cord extenders you can put all together, or making sure that they're well hidden and out of the path of um, walking. And also eliminating background noise. So. Sometimes we don't recognize it all the time, but even just in this presentation, you know, I can hear people talking. We're looking at the lights at times. There's a lot of external noise in our daily environment that can, can distract someone or cause you to lose your focus and balance. So we're gonna talk about our exterior, the coming into the home environment or coming, walking up to your home. What are we noticing? And what do we need to be paying attention to? So we're gonna look at the steps, the walkways. Are they in good condition? Are the handrails sturdy? Or do you even have handrails, that is? Are there, is there lighting where you're walking? On the sidewalk, on the front porch, wherever your path of entry is, you should be well lit and if not, to carry a flashlight or something that gives you that visual cue. Is the garage um, accessible? A lot of the times if we, our entryway is through the garage, do we have a clear path or is it covered in storage and boxes or anything that's a tripping hazard? There's also thresholds that can be a major part of our um, area of falling or losing our balance or tripping, especially with a walker or assistive device. Is that threshold leveled? Can we make it leveled? Can we remove that extra strip and then put a, a, you know, sand it down or whatever we need to do to make that just a clear leveled threshold? Um, also looking at the, the change of cement to tile or carpet to tile, that can throw your balance off a lot as well by your perception, your, vis your vision or maybe your shoes get stuck on the carpet versus the tile. So looking at this foyer hallway, I, there's numbers to where you should be looking and identifying some areas that may stand out to you as a fall risk or a tripping hazard. 
So now this is your part to talk a little bit and be creative. There's no wrong answer for any of these, but we'll talk about what the hazard is and then what we should, you know, what we could do to mod modify it to make it a little bit safer. So looking at any of the numbers, does anyone have an idea? Number one, the uh, welcome mat looks like it slides around, so it should have a non non slip backing on it. Yeah, non slip, or if we absolutely even need it there. Good. The yeah, get rid of the boots. It's a cluttered area. We're not. We may not see that boot as we're walking in, carrying the groceries, carrying the mail. You know, the dog just came and greeted you. There's other distractions that can be there as well. What else are we noticing? Close the open drawers. <laughs> drawers or boxes, again, that cluttered area or something that's sticking out that could get caught on your clothing. Is number four supposed to be a light? Yes. Okay. Yes, the, the drawings I'm not responsible for, but <laughs> I tried to find something that I, it would be identified in black and white contrast. Now, are those newspapers stacked up where the mail is? Yeah. That's not a good idea. No. Does that need to be there? Or they My need to recycle. Or <laughs> 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 Wait, you go to the <laughs> Now, making sure you're exercising regularly if we're eating those pizzas. <laughs> good. So the main thing is if you have carpet or if you have that mat there, try to remove it and make sure it's, it's stuck to the ground, secured and safe that you have good lighting in that area, remove the clutter, but that can be a lot. Those, the foyer, the hallway, right when you enter the house is most of the time where you're gonna put your shoes, where you put your belongings, and just make sure that you can try to organize that a little bit more for you. And anything else? Is there a basket you could put under the mail catch? Yeah, you could. To collect the mail rather than yeah. from stacking uh, up. You walk in, you step on an envelope and slide the ball. Yep. Good point. Good. We'll be doing this with a few of the other areas of your house as well. And so here's your checklist. When you go home, you're able to look through and are your steps in good condition? Do you have good lighting? Is the light switch accessible when you walk in? Or is it you have to reach and extend elsewhere to reach for that light while you're holding your purse and mail and things like that? Um, is there enough space to avoid bumping into some things or removing that clutter? Looking at the threshold, is that secured? Is the carpet or a tile secured? Making sure that that's in good condition. And uh, there's a lot of things we look at though. Um, and that's why I just wanted to provide you the checklist too. And if you don't have anything that's checked, then you want to reassess and look, is that something I should be looking at? Should I make any changes to that? And going from there. Now our kitchen environment. <laughs> I like that. I'm glad. We're learning here, right? Get rid of the rug, or if you need the rug, put some non-slip material under it. Sure. And what would a rug be for in a kitchen? Pretty. Pretty looks, but it could collect water from the sink. So a lot of people are against removing that floor mat in the kitchen because it can be a, a safety thing for preventing slips or water on the ground. But if, it, if you need it, exactly, put secure it down. Make sure that it's not going to get rugged up like that. The toaster plugged in, she could trip, he or she could trip grab the toaster, the stool is all wrong. It should be a, a step stool, if anything, not one of the little stool you would sit on. True. If anything, step stools could be removed Trip completely. Over the dog. Mm -hmm. So if she fell backwards, her right hand could hit number two, flip the pan of hot sauce, and the dog, the dog could bite their throat for the joy. He's the artist, he threw this picture. <laughs> right? She's a hot mess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Could do, yeah. Major thing too is put things that you need to reach. If there are things up high, put it within your reach. 
So you don't have to use the step stool. Reach, overreach, and lose your balance. The dog may want to be in a different room. The dog doesn't need to be in the kitchen while you're cooking, right? right. My dog is a huge tripping hazard while I'm cooking because he's right there all the time. So he has to go lay down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he might just be relaxing, knowing not to. What else about the environment? So we, we know the step stool, not reaching too high. Mm hmm It could be. Um, on this one, it was just the slippery, like making sure that there is no slippery um, surfaces. On my, yeah, there's no picture there. And number seven, is that supposed to be where the, the hood for the stove is supposed the to be? The hood. So making sure there's a fan or something to collect heat so there, you don't risk a fire. Also, there's no visible lights in that picture. So making sure that you do have good lighting in the kitchen even opening a window to bring the, ex the um, outside light in, but that also can cause a glare, so you want to be careful. But I think everything else we got. I think she needs a clock in there to tell her she spent too much time in the kitchen. Yeah? <laughs> or to keep her on track. There's a lot going on in that room. There's a lot of clutter. So being careful. Good. And so again, the kitchen recommendations that we're going to look at, your checklist. There's a lot. So I'm not going to go over all of them, but we, we hit the main points where you want to be able to, to have the floor mats if you need them, have them secured. Make sure that there's no slippery surfaces, that the oven and pots and pans aren't in your way. So if you walk by, you're not going to knock them off. So always turn the handles facing away from you. In the kitchen too, there's also stove protectors. So if you have a loved one or someone at home where they're forgetting to turn off the stove or forgetting, you know, to keep turn if the burner is kept on too long, there's equipment that you can get that prevents that from happening or alarms you. Now it's pretty pricey too, though. So I just tell people to set an external, you know, one of those loud timers that would work too. It's just you have to remember what that timer is for. Next one, our bathroom environments. Something we have to go to multiple times in a day. And there's a lot. So let's start at number one. Let's go in order here. Either getting rid of the rug or make it a non-slip. Yep. And I think a non-slip rug that absorbs water would be good in this situation. I don't see any. So those lines up there could be, but good point. No grab bars in this bathroom. How about number three? I don't know what that would be. It's, is that where the door is supposed to be or the light? Could be. It's just looking at the clutter again. So the shampoos are there. The soap is there. That can be slippery and cause a lot of falls or a lot of visual concerns too. Too much going on in that area. What about number eight? Well, they have to get over the rail of the tub, so that can sometimes be challenging. And that, little, that one looks pretty high, maybe as even to the toilet. So you have to step pretty high over to get there. Instead of stepping over, you could add a chair for a tub. They have transfer tub chairs that would be helpful. So you can sit and slide your feet in rather than stepping and losing your balance. Is the location of the toilet paper dispenser a challenge for someone? It is. Big challenge. Yep. Good eye. And so you'd want to move that so it's accessible, so you don't have to bend and twist and reach, that you can just get to it close. Lots of things to look out for, though. The toilet seat itself may be too high, or 
I'm looking at there's no grab bars again by the toilet. So if we need to add a chair over that, like a, a <coughs> raised toilet seat with handles or a grab bar on the wall, that could be done as well. What's the right height for a toilet seat? Because I've had some people say to me when using our restrooms back there, boy, your toilet sits so low. Yeah. And you know, but I just heard you say maybe it's too high. So what? What's uh, could be too low or too high? Yeah. Um, for basic, um, general standard toilets are typically 16 to 18 inches. Um, for ADA accessibility, they should be at least eight, 17 to 18 inches. Okay. They're actually 15 inches. I've seen this. Like yeah. The older style are, yeah, a lot. Like in schools, I'll mm -hmm. see a lot of them that are way too low. Interesting. But that's why the, the equipment, too. Rather than changing your toilet completely, you can put a raised toilet seat on it or add a chair with grab bars and I'll show you that equipment at the end. So this is a, a quick bathroom, what a safe bathroom could look at. So using that chair or that sliding um, bench into the tub, it comes out over the tub so you're able to sit and then slide your feet in. The main barrier with, I, that people have told me with this is there's just not enough space in our bathrooms and that can be a challenge. So being aware that equipment itself could cause clutter but making sure that it's secured or that it's appropriate level for you, that everything, the adjustments on it are secure as well. So they have a non-slip mat there. And grab bar placement is vital. I always would recommend a grab bar placement angled up on the side that you're getting in or out of, um, depending on your physical abilities too. We have to look at the person's ability to reach and can they reach forward or does their shoulder have problems or weakness or is our grasp impacted? So there's a lot of different things to consider in home modifications. So that's why we want to make sure that you come to OT or you have your resource available so that you can get the appropriate measurements done. Also the shower heads. A lot of people will recommend a, a shower head and a uh, you know, and that one that you can freely move to around. But then they don't recommend the little shower arm. So they have to reach way up high to grab that and that can cause you to fall. So there are little attachments you can add so that you can just hook that down below within your reach. And then the toilet seats there too. You can raise the toilet seat up in a high. Toilet, um, the toilet paper dispenser is nice and close. Our living space. Another fun area that we spend most of our days in at, at times. What would you say number one would be? Extension cord or the cord. Yep, there's the extension cord listed as number three, the rug. So remove that rug or make sure it's secured again. Are you seeing the pattern with throw rugs? I want to make that clear. If you don't need it, get it out. Throw it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Broken chair number six. Good. Unsecured surfaces. That pole app could tip. Mm-hmm. Again, it's pretty cluttered in that space. There's a lot going on, so. There's really only the, the two lamps in the corners of the room that's visible. Yeah, number seven, it shouldn't go underneath that. Right? Also, looking at furniture within our homes. As we age, we like to keep the same furniture, but that could get pretty worn down and torn and um, just the, the cushion itself could get worn down. So making sure that you have newer um, or even adding in, like I've just had people, if you really want that couch still, you really like that sofa that you're connected to, then put a piece of plywood or put something under it that's going to stop it from condensing so far down and give you a little bit more of a lift. 
They also have furniture risers, so you could put that under the um, feet of the sofa or the chair, just making sure those are, secu those are secured for the major part. Good. Anything else that's standing out? I think you guys got them all. Bedroom area. How am I doing on time? About five minutes. Okay. So we'll run That's through this. Extension cord on the TV set. Yeah. <laughs> Containers just sitting there. Here again, throw rugs. Yep. Throw rugs. Replace Clutter. Replace Poor lighting. Major point. Cordless phone. Yeah. Lots of clutter in this one, though. Also, the comforters and the sheets can be a fall risk for you within your home environment that maybe they're too slippery or the color blends in with the ground and you can't di identify that very well. So looking at that. And night lights, those can be great too. So again, here's the little checklist you can have when you go home and look at your bedroom environment. And anything you're not checking, you wanna reconsider. So these are some different pictures of equipment that we've already talked about as we've gone through. The double stick um, secured on, under that floor mat, making sure that it's a non-skid piece of equipment or anything like that. Uh, the grab bars, the raised toilet seats, you can put grab bars pretty much anywhere or on anything. They have a variety of different types. For pets, get that gate go the gate door and make sure that they are in a different area, especially like when coming home or when cooking. And there's night lights that are available as well. And then adaptive equipment that we as OTs will either assess your function with or provide for you, or provide the resources to get them for you. So helping you get dressed and knowing that it will save you energy or save you from bending down so far. There's different equipment too to help you walk and if balance is a major issue too to know that physical therapy is there to help assess your balance further as well. Different adaptive equipment things too for getting dressed like a button hook that's in the right corner there that you can use if your fine motor skills or your fingers don't work as well as they used to or visual problems. Those zoo bits there are fancy shoe clasps. So they are magnetic shoe um, laces for you. So you tie your own shoelaces within those holes and then it can clasp together and secure. And they're pretty strong. So as they, as they come just within a little bit, you know, a couple centimeters, they're gonna close pretty securely. And as you jump or run, they don't come undone. It's the angle. So you can put your foot on an angle and try to you, you push up and they bust through. So you don't have to tie or untie with them. Do you have to get those uh, medical equipment? Uh, we, honestly, I would look on Amazon for most of this. And med the medical stores, I don't know if they have them. I think I've seen even shoe clasps, like the Zubits at Walgreens before and things. So it's kind of like as seen on TV in those, those sections too. But Always check on Amazon and then always have a doctor prescribe the walkers and the, medical, the durable medical equipment. It, most of insurances aren't going to cover it, but knowing that at least you have the script and you try, then it just depends on case by case. So overall, assistive devices, I know I'm running on time, but assistive devices and home assessments as OTs, we want to help maintain your ability to stay safe prevent falls, rec recommend equipment, or any other needs that you need to keep and maintain your independence and function within your home. The idea of this aging population is going to be huge, so if any questions or if any loved ones have questions, refer to an occupational therapist or anywhere else that, that can help you get these home modifications and make sure that you can be safe and age in place. That's our main goal. Any questions right now? Overall, there's a lot we've covered. Yeah? What is that transfer belt that I see in the picture? The bench? Belt. Belt. Transfer belt. Oh, so that's for a loved one or for somebody that you're helping walk. 
or maintain balance. So you can hold on to that rather than grabbing their pants or grabbing their shirt. And pick. yeah, it's a gate belt. Yeah. Good question. Yeah, so if he has trouble getting up or walking or anything like that, those gate belts, put, if you put them like right above your belly button area, pretty secured, that it gives you something that you can help either secure it and grab on to as they're standing or walking. If they tend to lose their balance, then you have a little bit more support. Just depends making sure your body mechanics too are safe with them. When a person falls, Mm -hmm. Do you recommend they call 911 or 311? So it depends on injury too. Um, I would always go with emergency response first. And if, if there's not a fall that, or if there's not an injury, then it depends on your, the person's assessment of themselves too. But if they can't get back up, 311 is available for non-emergency situations like the, um, the hospital, the ER and things. So the firefighters can come and help you get up and assess your cognition, make sure that you didn't lose consciousness and things. But you know, I'm always going to recommend emergency response if there's an injury or if there's anything that you're second guessing.